Sei la mia donna, la forza delle onde del mare, con i miei sogni, i miei segreti. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Italian Football TV. What a weekend, what a round that we had in the Serie A. Crazy round, very crazy. So many upsets. I think we'll start off with Inter against Udinese. Udinese won this game. Wow. How do we even start with this? Dude, the... <laughs> I couldn't believe this. I put all the money that Inter were going to take this, but they lost the first game of the Serie A season. Not even 2-1, not 1-0, but 3-1 to Udinese. Not even, not even a good sign in Serie A for having a pretty poor season so far. And Inter were not even playing that bad. I mean, they started the first half pretty good. They tied the game up 1-1 with Icardi, who can't stop scoring. But then in the second half, I feel like, I feel like they underestimated Udinese a little bit. I can see what that. What do you think? I can see that for sure, because uh, like we said before, and I'm surprised too, because Spalletti's not that kind of coach that would yeah. underestimate anyone. But then, at the end of the day, you're not always going to win. You're not always going to exactly. not lose. These games happen in exactly. a season. And I think we know that Inter's fullbacks have been overperforming. You know, they're not the best. That's always been their problem. Skriniar and Miranda can't do everything together. They're an amazing duo. But I think that um, Santon, I mean... Santon what, gave up that penalty. I mean, they're always going to be the weak spots with the fullbacks. And Inter don't have the depth that other teams have. That's true. And in these kind of games where Udinese came out extremely physical, they played the match... And they were smart in the second half. I think they were extremely smart. And uh, these games happen in the season. You can't expect to go unbeaten. For Inter, it's just a moment to not get super down and understand that, that it happens and, and you move on from here. I mean, the third place right now, the Mercado's coming up, so definitely yeah. not too shabby at all. You said they're going to come in third place uh, before the season started. I, like, I don't know what it is. Are they tired? Do they not have enough depth? Did they underestimate Udinese? And Udinese, by the way, we have to give them super credit because Massimo Oddo, three wins in a row in the Serie A. Crotone, Benevento, and now against Inter. He's really revitalizing this Udinese squad and a win at the San Siro. Absolutely huge for his men. Let's move on to Napoli, who did not miss the opportunity to take advantage of Inter's slip-up. Inter went into this round. Capo Caniniere, Capo Caniniere, what am I saying? On top of the Serie A table, and now Napoli finish it on top of the table. 3-1 win over Torino, where Gallo Belotti finally got on the score sheet. After like three months. September 20th was the last time Belotti scored before wow. this match. Very straightforward. They scored from like the fourth minute. And Torino didn't make it interesting at all, but Napoli, yeah. they really couldn't lose this game, and they didn't. I have a confession to make, Mike. Wow! Okay! Wow. So when it was like 3-0 in like the 40 like second minute, I kind of switched to like Man City Tottenham. Are you serious right now? For a few minutes, bro, I had to scope out the competition in Tottenham. Bro. It got boring. It got is, boring for I showed on it was Twitter, like eight minutes. I saw on Twitter everyone was talking was like, ah, whatever. I was like, I'm watching Torino Napoli still. That game still was a good game. That game was boring too. And the thing we bored. didn't talk about was Mari Kamsik equalized yes. our boy Diego Maradona's record. 115 goals in a Napoli jersey. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. He slowed down a lot ever since he got close to the record. He did. And he was he, he wasn't was, playing badly. So hopefully this is the moment where he could step up and be Hamsik well, that we know. maybe not, because it's going to be very hard to break Maradona's So it's going to be another three-month drought equal, or something. I think equaling it was what it was going to be extremely hard. But I think that this is an important moment for Napoli, who was coming off a few tough games. They lost to Juve. They got kicked out of the Champions League after losing to Feyenoord. They tied Fiorentina. And today, they had to win against Torino, who could be tricky at home sometime. And this was not an easy game. They handled it extremely well. And maybe this could be the time where they come back from this small drought and a few tough games in a row. So let us know what you thought about Napoli's win. Top of the table again. Roma, another one who nearly slipped up when Inter wow. lost. Last second. It came with so much controversy. A lot. Federico Fazio, who earlier this week was praised by Batistuta as being one of the best defenders in the world. I know we got a lot of comments by posting fetched. that graphic. But he scores, and like I said, controversial. Is this a handball, Michael? We spoke about this for hours today. They checked VAR, yeah. and VAR said that it was not a handball. It was a goal. What's uh, your verdict? So, to me, it looks like it hit his chest first, uh, then it hit his arm, uh, then in he arm. slotted it in. For one referee, it is. For one referee, it's not. people and say it it's not, the bar. It was natural. Everyone has been disagreeing over this call. It did hit his chest, 
and then it hit his arm. And like, what's, what can he do? His arm was not far out. It's not like Yelko Falke where his arm was far out. Yeah. But then, if his arm wasn't there, the ball might have fell back, but then there's always, always mana loss. I Go still on. think it's the right call. I don't know. I know we're disagreeing. I, I, I'm confused, guys. Nope. Let us know. That, I, I am leaning. We need to take a referee. But I am leaning on that just only because his hand wasn't as extended and yeah. it didn't hit his arm first. So. Kalyidi defended uh, the entire match. They were really sitting back. They nearly got that 0-0 that I know they would have loved to get at the Stadio Olimpico. Really frustrating Roma. A Roma who is struggling to score goals. Sheik in a position that I do not like him on, on that right wing. He is a center forward. It was his second game, third game that he's been playing for Roma. A little bit tough. You could see him fighting, and I wish him the best, and I know we're both rooting for him because he's our boy. Good job, good job. But I think it's going to be tough. Jekyll also not scoring, not getting that service that he needs. Roma really got to look at what they're going to do in the, in the winter transfer market because we know that a lot of teams are not slipping up. But at the end of the day, Roma come away with three huge points, which could have just been one point. That's true. And Roma also have a game in hand. So if they do win that, that extra game, they'd be tied with second place with Juventus. So good Roma point. are doing very good right Great now. Great point. I think that makes this even more exactly. important of a win. Elas Verona, 3-0 to AC Milan. But before we get into this one, guys, uh, we vlogged some of our week, what we've been doing. We had a merch shoot for the merch that you know was coming out. So we took some pictures of that. And then we were on Italian TV channel, Sport Italia, giving our perspective on the game because we had a meeting with them, IFTV, and it was pretty cool. We we're on TV, some of our fam my family in Italy saw us on TV, so it was a cool day. Photo shoot time, check out this merch, check it out. Just came in, one box, two box. Mike, how you feeling right now? Feeling good, guys. We got some great shirts. It's gonna be blurred out, obviously, so you can't see it. Sorry, guys. Excited? How do you think they came out? I think they turned out better than I thought, to be honest. You guys will love them. Woo! First shipment just came in right now. Sick. We're doing this nice photo Check shoot with a green screen. Have they seen the lights before? Yo, Max, it's our photographer right now. What do you think about the shirts? I like them. Nice? Nice. Perfect. Took like three or four months to make these. Look, Mike, get in, get in, get in. Let's go to China. Let's go to China. We're in China. Go to Greece. Go to Greece, go to Greece, go to Greece, go to Greece. What are you gonna do in Greece? <laughs> All right, let's get this photo shoot going. Hard times, but then when I made two, two, keep it chin high, cause I believe in you. It doesn't matter what happens from now on. We gotta stick together, we gotta stay strong. Let me see you with your hands to the left and then to the right, it's gonna be. But all you gotta right. keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head out. So uh, we do a lot of stuff uh, behind the camera too. It's not just what's on the camera and all yep. the editing. We do a bunch of those stuff, guys. But let's talk about Elzvin on a 3-0 oh AC Milan. That's I know crazy. a lot of people are going to want to hear your crazy. opinion. But first thing I want to say, Caracciolo follows us on Instagram. The guy who scored the first goal for Elas Verona, he follows IFTV on Instagram. So shout out to him. Get following him. Get following us on IFTV. So I was pretty happy to see that. I know that you're a little bit torn because you like him, but, uh, but uh, you know, Milan lost. What the hell is wrong with Milan, Dude, bro? Dude, you think this is a freebie for Milan? It's been a pretty easy schedule up till now, and Gattuso really hasn't got the maximum points. And it's depressing, only because they play, Milan did play uh, the Coppa Italia against Verona, and they won 3-0. That's so weird. And just a, a few, days, few days later, they lose again. So, but this is the opposite. Somebody, Verona wins 3-0. Somebody commented, like, 3-3 on aggregate. Let's call <laughs> it even. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, why are people blaming Gattuso? I, I feel for Gattuso, man. Like, I love Gattuso. I really think he's put into a position where he wasn't extremely qualified. And I think Milan also is looking to put a lot of the blame on him. You know, they don't have to pay him much, which was a plus for them. They could always blame the coach. And 
their their problems are much more they're deep rooted. Absolutely. But deep the thing is, if you lose three zero to Ellis Verona, I mean, it was come worse on. by second Montella come on. now. Because I, I really don't think Montella really could have lost his game, to be honest. Uh, Montella had a different philosophy now. Gattuso's trying to implement his philosophy. He's messing up what was going on the past few months when Montella was there in the beginning of the season. I really don't see a future I for hope, Gattuso. I, I really, but I hope that he doesn't go. I mean, one point with between Benevento and Elas Verona playing them, unthinkable to not get six points. Yeah, but it is what it is, and we cannot doubt a 3-0 win. Credit to Elas Verona, who were not scared in this match. That it's good that these smaller teams are fighting, even if it is against AC Milan, which a lot of teams are picking up points. It's true. But the confidence that they have, I think, is even scarier as for an AC Milan fan where you see, how can Elas Verona have this much confidence to play us, score a goal, and then continue to attack? Um, I think it's a deep problem. Uh, Milan fans, let us know down below what you think. Is this Gattuso's fault? Is this the manager's fault? Whose fault does this come down to? Is it the players? Let us know. Um, another 3-0 win. This one completely straightforward. Bologna, Juventus. A match that Bologna, I don't even think Donadoni's men showed up to the field. Juventus completely obliterated them. Pjanic scored on a free kick. Mandzukic scored an absolute brilliant second goal. And then from there, I mean, I'm just so, killed it. I'm so killed surprised it. for Bologna. I really thought they put some hunger in there. It, it was bad. It was too straightforward for Juventus. That's something you don't want to see because uh, Torosidis didn't play, see. dude. Torosidis was not in the starting lineup. He was supposed to play. I want to see him. I was mad about that. It could have been a tricky match for Juventus. It wasn't at all. And they had to pick up points. They go into second place just one point behind Napoli after round 17 leapfrogging Inter for the moment. Juve starting to get this rhythm going. There is that elephant in the room, which we haven't talked about, which is Paolo Dybala. Everyone asking, why is Dybala not playing? He is not injured. He's having some off-the-field problems. Allegri opting to not start him again. And I know a lot of people are concerned. Not sure what to say about the situation. I think that, like Nedved said, he said it perfectly. He said he needs to focus on the pitch. I know that he's got these girlfriend problems. Apparently, he's got these legal problems. And a lot of stuff is happening in his life. And I think that, mixed with the way that the Italian media puts pressure, because he scored 10 goals in, like, a few games, that he's got to replicate that and duplicate it and do the exact same. You go through moments in a season where you play really well, and then you don't play as well. It's normal. To score 10 goals in five games, whatever it was, that's not normal. And you can't expect to continue that going. you got to keep your head up. It's not about Dybala. It's about Juventus. And I think that um, he's going to go past this. And yeah. people are blowing it out of proportion I mean, a little the, bit. We all know Dybala is a world-class player. So there's just a small drop for him. Yeah. And he's just going to move on for him. And I think once again, we see that Juventus' real strength is that they have two and a half teams. The bench that they have is Literally. absolutely ridiculous. And I keep saying that it's going to prove vital. I know Michael doesn't like to hear this, but I think it will. No, it's true, though. Well, uh, one of the most exciting matches, if not the most exciting match of the season, of the round, Atalanta 3-3 Lazio, where Atalanta went up 2-0 to start it. Lazio came back 2-2. Milinkovic Savic, absolutely ridiculous. Atalanta went up 3-2. And then Lazio said, I see you, I match you, and I get 3-3. This game, six goals. Uh, I really thought, like, uh, Immobile wasn't starting for this game. So I was thinking, Suspended. okay, this could be closer than we thought. Atalanta is not a walkover team. Game after game, Milinkovic Savic is proving how important he's going to be as a European footballer for years to come. The world is going to start to know who Milinkovic Savic is. He's absolutely ridiculous. Inzaghi was also thrown out of this match. Something you don't often see because I see Inzaghi very level-headed. Even when things go against him, you know, he, he likes to stay calm and not overreact. Mm -hmm. He was sent off. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, no Immobile in this match, which proved vital. But I think an even display, considering that Atalanta is a very good team. Lazio, very good team. And overall, this is a great show for the Serie A. In other games, Crotone beat Chievo Verona 1-0. Fiorentina somehow tied Genoa 0-0. Fantastic result for Geno, to be honest. And Sampdoria lost to Sassuolo with Mitra Matri scoring the game-winning goal. And it's been a long time since we've seen that. And also, we saw Toreda do his best impression of Gianluigi Buffon in that match. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Poor Sampdoria is yeah. not looking good. Sampdoria, they keep starting the seasons well. And then they dip off they little by little by yeah. little. Frustrating. I, don't know. I think it might be a physical problem. I know we mentioned this in the past. 
let us know. Do you think Sam Dori's problem is a physical one? That was round 17 of the Serie A. I know uh, Italians abroad. Conte, he won, right? Barely won. Conte won, yeah. We've heard some, from some friends who actually watched the match and said that it wasn't the best of games from Chelsea, but they ended up coming through with a win. And uh, yeah, that's how everything went. Let us know down below what you thought about round 17 of the Serie A. Comment your thoughts. And as always, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, Ciao guys. Ragazzi. You ruin everything! <laughs> oh, do the Bonucci. I'm not doing the Bonucci, bro. I'm not doing the Bonucci. Bro, that guy's definitely cousins with Sadi.